Let's imagine a world where Microsoft hadn't succeeded with Windows and where Steve Jobs never returned to Apple and then Apple eventually failed. What would that world look like? Enter a world. Enter a world. Enter a world. Here it is. Hello everyone, it is me. Silas, your favourite random person that likes to talk about computer things sometimes. Today we are talking about Haiku OS, but before we do that, we have to jump into a little history lesson. 1995. The first release of BOS happened. What is BOS, you ask? Well, it's an operating system made by B Inc, which is a company that was founded by an ex-Apple executive. Windows had been around for a long time, still being based on very old Microsoft DOS code. Let's plug it in. It's going to say, hey, I see you plugged in a new device, and it's going to load in the appropriate drivers. You'll notice that this scanner build... Whoa. <laughs> Apple's Macintosh system had also been around for a rather long time and uh, it has started getting a bit crashy and bad. So, so the people at B thought, We set out to start from a blank slate. This frees us from all the layers and layers of uh, bug fixes and improvements that you uh, see as sediments on the older operating system platforms and make them uh, slower. BOS has multi-threading built in, preemptive multitasking, but BOS also supported multiple CPUs. Multi-core CPUs didn't exist, so they developed it with literally for literally motherboards with multiple processors on it. The entire OS can take advantage of more than one processor in a system. In fact, the BOS has been run on systems with up to eight processors. This means as you go from one to two processors, you get a nearly 100% increase in performance. What you'll notice as I turn the processor on and off is the rendering speeds up and slows down. The BOS dynamically handles allocating threads to whatever the next available processor is. Today your thread might run on processor 1, and tomorrow it'll run on processor 4. They were thinking really far ahead, I think. Because nowadays, what do we have? With like, 32 core processors? Yeah. BOS became that awesome that eventually Apple even approached them trying to buy BOS because Apple just couldn't develop a new macOS version that was not shit. This is where the internet is kind of like not sure what really happened. But apparently during the negotiations between Apple and B, Apple didn't want to pay more than 125 to 200 million dollars. But BOS, the B people wanted between 300 and 500 million US dollars. But Apple thought that was too much. And then Apple decided to buy next for 400 and uh, something million dollars instead of B. Which eventually led to the downfall of B because they couldn't really get a lot of users to jump on board with it. BOS then was ported from PowerPC architecture to normal x86 computers, like normal that would normally run Windows, and there developed a little, a very little niche fan base that really liked it, and it was really awesome, as you can surely see from these video demos that they're showing. This was all insane sci-fi shit back then. Just pause this video now, because look at these comments. Look at these comments from people who've actually used BOS in the past. This was pretty awesome. The world didn't want it. In the end, BOS was actually just sold to Palm in 2001. And then eventually, that whole thing also got taken over by Access. Not that great of an ending. Now, what happened after that was there was a continuation not in the form of Haiku, but actually in the form of what was called Zeta, which was developed by a company called Yellow Tab. The thing is, though, Yellow Tab developed this, but nobody really knew if they even had rights to, like, use the BOS code base until Access declared that they didn't have any rights to use it, and uh, then they had to cease the production and distribution of it. And that's where we land now. 
with Haiku. Haiku is a completely new operating system with the, the, the first alpha version released in 2009. It's not really related to BOS in terms of what code it uses or whatever. Um, it's just a re-implementation. So the people looked at what, uh, what BOS did and how it did it. And then people came up with their own solutions to do those same things. And uh, that's it right here. That's it. This is it. This is Haiku. First, like in most videos, we will install it. So how do you install Haiku OS? Right now, key map. I will select German, key uh, German keyboard, wherever that is. So there it is, German. And install Haiku. This is just a warning about this being beta software. Click continue. No partitions have been found that are suitable for installation. Please set up partitions and format at least one partition with the B file system. So it will open up drive setup, I believe it's called. We well, have to click here and then it will open up drive setup. <laughs> yeah, okay, so there we go. This is the VirtualBox disk. I'm installing this on a VirtualBox machine like always in these videos. Well, like many times in these videos. I recommend you do the same if you want to try this out because on real hardware this is not that easy to get running like for example you need to install some special files somewhere in special directories if you want to boot it on a modern system with a uefi bios at least on my ryzen pc that was the case and that was annoying and then also some hardware things aren't supported at all so yeah that's pretty silly it's still in development it's fine so what we do now is we get this drive we right click it Okay, left click it too. Uh, right click, format B file system. Are you sure you want to format a raw disk? Most people are listening to disk with a partition, blah, blah, blah. Continue, yes, for this case, it's fine. Right, changes. There you go. Now we have one B file system partition, 32 gigabytes, which is my virtual disk that I've made. VirtualBox hard disk, select this right there. Uh, show optional packages. I recommend just leave all of them on because why not? And begin. And there you go. It was really quick. That was surprisingly fast actually. That was genuinely pretty fast. Um, installation completed. Boot sector has been written. Press restart to restart computer. Restart. Interestingly enough, I believe that it has now crashed or something because it's not working. Hello? Now the question is why? Nobody knows. I guess it's just stuck. Did I not do something? Usually I give this like six cores of my CPU. Maybe that's a problem. I don't think it is though. I really don't think it is, but maybe. Because this should be able to run on like crap hardware too okay now I think it's just fucked maybe is it fucked now I don't know what's different between these because it has the same settings so this VM I already made and I've already played around with and used and I think this one is fine if this one is busted now too, I'll be angry. Oh, it's working. Well, let's continue with this one then, right? Shall we? Okay, so the installation for Haiku, for some reason, it just didn't want to do it. That's fine. That happens because this is like a really early operating system. So one of the one of the first one of the first things that I want to mention about Haiku is its uh, user experience. So you start off like this. And this was basically your desktop. One well, thing that's immediately clear is how spacious it is because there's nothing cluttering the space. On other operating systems, you get notifications and you have different task bars and top bars and other things like that. But by default, there's nothing here. So right there, this is the little leaf button thing, which is kind of the Haiku equivalent of a start menu. And there you have your little system tray icons. 
not sure if they're called system tray icons here, but that's basically what it is on Windows, system tray, or... And then this is the space where your minimized applications go to. Now, one of the first things that I think you should turn on, if it's not turned on by default, I'm not sure it wasn't turned on when I tried testing this, turn on this Show Replicants button, you will see why soon. So, in here you have all your, and your, all your options, find, mount different drives, settings for the desk bar for this thing, shutdown menu, recently used files and things, and then you have different folders with all the programs that you can run. Let's just open a few up. So now I've opened up a few things. We have the activity monitor, we have disk usage, and I've opened up LibreOffice Writer, which is minimized right now. And first of all, how do you minimize an app? You minimize an app by just, well, first of all, you can see your window right there. Uh, you have usually a little corner right there where you can resize windows. You can't resize windows everywhere, which I think is kind of annoying, but you can drag windows on all edges, so that's the trade-off here, being able to drag windows from all the edges. But then you're only able to resize a window from the bottom right. I think it's the wrong trade-off. I think you should just be able to resize it everywhere. But at least there's a different, there's a separate function here, which is dragging the window. Then you have this little title bar tab at the top of the window there's a little bright yellow title bar tab thing um yes you have your little close button right there which quits the application or closes that window usually it quits it as well as uh, from what i've seen you can minimize a window by just double pressing and double clicking this middle part right there and then it gets minimized into a little a little icon right there you can also do hide all which is minimizing the window, show all, or just close everything. And then there's this button, which usually means that it, the app gets maximized, kind of like this. But as you can see with this, you can also see that it just doesn't maximize it. It goes into this arbitrarily chosen shape for the big version of this app. Um... I'm, I think that the developers of this app can like select or define how it's supposed to get maximized. Because some apps maximize it like this, like you would see on Windows or on uh, most Linux things, where it just takes over the whole screen without taking away the taskbar and other features. Yeah, that's just the, the make big and make small button. Then you can also which is a new thing which you don't know or have on, on, on Windows or whatever. If you have multiple windows and you want to... I mean, this kind of doesn't make sense, but if you have multiple windows, like one that's your, your home folder, and one that's your, your trash bin or something, and you're like, wow, I would... I really want to move some files around, but it's too hard to see or whatever I have done this on Windows many times when you want to move some files around and then it's like going nasty and you end up having like 10 different folder pages open at least I have those 10 different folder windows open just because I forget and launch a new one now with this what you can just do you get the little uh, title tab you press the options key which is aka the Windows key, and then you can press it, drag the window close to an edge of another window, and you can see it kind of turning grey there, or at the bottom too, or on any of the four sides of it, I think. Yeah, on any, any four sides you can just do this. And now if you let go with the mouse, this happens. And what's happened now is that the windows are now snapped together, or tiled, as they call it. I think snapping them together is a better way of naming them, but you can still resize the windows. Obviously, they are now linked, so depending how they are linked, some of the other the X or the Y axis is like linked to each other. That's fine. That makes sense, right? If it's mapped like this, if it's 
snapped like this. Obviously, they are linked in the X axis. Yeah. Another feature that you can do is take the it away again using the options key, but then you drag the title tab onto another tab and then it turns uh, this kind of like dark yellowish kind of brown looking thing. And then when you let go, they're now on top of each other, they're now stacked windows and when you move one you move both of them, but you resize one. The other one is resized as well because they are the same window. You can do this with, with any app too. You can just stack and tile as many things. I, I think as many as you want. I'm not sure actually. Let's try if it gets full at some point. Not, I'm really not sure if there is a is a limit to this. Like look, there's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven windows tiled right now and it's still fine. Yeah, to remove it, you just get them out of them with the command key with the option key I mean I think that's a really cool feature I do think that's a really awesome feature that I would I would like to see on other operating systems I think they do need to do a better job of explaining this to someone because if you have never used this before and you don't know about it then you will not use this you won't use these tiling and snapping features because you need to actively press a button drag a window and then drag it on this specific other tab or specifically to the other side of a window most people don't know to do that because most people haven't used haiku or so now the thing that i said before to turn it on which is the replicants when you turn that on you get these little wrench icons or whatever that this is i can't really tell what that symbol is supposed to be it's very small but now if we take actually make that a little bit smaller because um, i know what's about to happen so if you take that you put your mouse pointer on it and you start pressing and dragging you get this little box now i wonder what that could be well actually it's just essentially what you could call a desktop widget so you can just take all oh, your memory or CPU usage or whatever you want, drag it outside of the window, place it somewhere, and then that's where it lives now. That's your um, replicant on your desktop now. Other apps have this too, like if you go into, I think the calculator has this too. I Workspaces, let's use works, but workspaces. So if you have your, your little workspaces switcher app here, and you don't want to... Oh, I've closed it now. So you have your little workspaces window right there, but then if you click on the... It is there still. Yeah, it's a window. But also, this has a replicant. So you can just take this out, put the replicant back in where you want to place it. I don't know, like right there or something. And then that's where it lives. You don't have an annoying window tab there it doesn't get annoying because it's always in the background right replicants are in the background so nothing can really happen and you also can't really move an, a replicant like on accident or something they don't really interact with windows so that's i think a really cool feature i also believe that they actually stay around after you restart your system And yeah, they do stay around after you restart your system and apparently also open these windows back up. Which I didn't want, but they do stay around. The replicants stay around, at least for now they did. And yeah, you can also get the calculator wherever it is. I will find it someday. That's probably my biggest criticism. I really don't like this menu just because everything is so small. Calculator's not even there. And that doesn't seem to be a quick search system to launch an app. Like, I use GNOME on Linux. I use GNOME. You just press the... You just press the, the Windows key. And then either you already see what you want to use. Or you just type in the first few letters and then that's it. And that's how you launch it. And that's the workflow that I'm very much used to nowadays. And this doesn't even have a good search box. Like, if it, I've tried searching this before. 
calculator. And it just shows you random, like, image files. And... I don't know what that is. Queries. Calcu, calcu... Oh, that's where I searched for it, I guess. I... That's my biggest quiz. The, the UI. Which is cool. Has some cool features, but it needs to be... I think it needs to be reworked, personally. Launch box. What is that? What is launch box? The desk calc. That's what it's called. Okay. So we can resize it, make it small like this, or we can make it really big, and then get a really big replicant out of it. It has worked, it just took a long time. You can delete them, you just press right click on the little icon there, remove replicant, and you can interact with this, right? That's the basics of how to use Haiku. The last basic, I guess, is you can do this. Make the little desk bar big, wide or small. Or if you drag the other side, you can also kind of change its, like, orientation. And I find myself using it in this way more, and I like it way more because it just, first of all, looks nicer, and it's at the top, which makes the most sense to me. Because on Haiku as well, most apps have menu bars like this. If you open up this and make it, oh, I can't make this bigger apparently. You see that the options are top left in the window, so I don't understand why everything else has to be at the right side. That's why I always liked menu bars that are at the top because everything else in a window usually is at the top, so you're using your cursor already at the top of the window anyways. If you can maximize things, this one is also a, another weird one where I think the big and small button doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Because why would I want to use it in this way if I didn't want to use it in this way first? What's the problem with just having everything be? By the way, I really hope that like some more, some people that are more into Haiku, I like it, I like Haiku, I think it's a really cool idea and it's done well uh, and I have contributed a few things to it in terms of like bug reports and stuff um, I hope that some other like people that are more into haiku maybe someone who's like actually more working on haiku is watching this and, like can explain stuff in the comments please now, some of these things just don't make a lot of sense to me anymore in 2022 there it is haiku depot and this is where you will install programs from because they use repositories and stuff like that. It's not like Windows where you have to go to a random website and hope that you're downloading the correct file. <laughs> so here we can look at that featured packages, which kind of looks a bit stupid because this is just a, such a big icon and big name. And then it's like a few words right next to it, really small. So you can go ahead and look at a few things in here. Go to all packages. Look at games or whatever things you like. Yeah, and then if you choose, I don't know, let's choose science and mathematics. All right, let's see, look, look at this, Arduino. If you're programmed stuff for Arduino and you're like, well, let's download this. You can just press the little install button right there. Then it will be working and then it will show you what changes it's going to make to your system actually. And uh, look at these things, and then you press Apply Changes, and it will install it. You can see it in the bottom left. I've already installed a few things, because... Well, let's first of all, let's look at some other features that are actually built in. Um, there's a web browser called Web Positive, which is, for the most part, pretty good. You can go to... Bing! Is it even Bing.com? I don't even know. But I love that name though. You can go to Bing. It's absolutely stupid. I don't even think it's working correctly. Is it? Network connection. Right. Help us. I don't know. Link speed 100 megabits. Oh, fuck. Do I even have internet right now? Is it, is it working? Bing. Bing is working, yeah, see? 
So I guess Haiku is just very shy that I'm recording now where shit goes wrong. Oh, guys, come on. So there's another, there's a few browsers for this already. This does have some cool applications already. For example, you have a whole fucking office suite. You have all LibreOffice on here already, which is amazing. I didn't even think that was a real LibreOffice until I downloaded and installed it on here, and I think it is. It's just literally LibreOffice, which is insane to me. So theoretically, you could like do homework or whatever stuff on here, which is wild. And of course, oh no, LibreOffice, that's not the best one. Yeah, but it's like, what, the second or third best one? If you don't want to use Microsoft, like, what are you going to use? LibreOffice? Maybe OnlyOffice? I like OnlyOffice because... LibreOffice, guys, I would use your stuff more if you had, like, a ribbon UI or something that's, like, less than this cluttered, like, god fuck, why? This makes me really, like, like, panicking. This, this makes me panic, almost, because there's so much stuff going on. <laughs> but the point is, you have LibreOffice on here already, so... If you can install this somewhere, you can do an experiment and just use LibreOffice. Uh, just use Haiku for like a day or something. It's not going to work because what I was going to show you is that a lot of websites work. But some look weird and then others are completely broken. Like YouTube, for example, is just completely screwed up. Which is a bit sad, but YouTube is a bit of a probably like the, the biggest beast of websites right now especially because it's probably written to work on google chrome and maybe firefox i even remember like back when edge used to be its own engine i used edge and uh, some things just weren't correct on edge it worked but it just wasn't a hundred percent correct well while this is but maybe working at some point again. We can use, uh, look at some things, some demos, like clock. That's it. That's it. Clock. Oh, look, it has different, like, faces. Nice. There's GLT bot. GLT, which is the... If you know what this is, you know what this is. If you don't know what it is, it doesn't really matter. It's fine. Obviously, you can uh, resize windows. That's a bit annoying. You can't resize windows anywhere. You can drag them from the edges everywhere, which is, I think, cool. But I think it would be more important to be able to resize a window everywhere because this corner right there, I don't know, it feels kind of fiddly trying to only resize a window with that single corner, but that's uh, not that big of a deal because you're Let's just keep some stuff open and see its performance and stability. There's Haiku 3D Demo, which is just literally Haiku letters. Ooh. It looks a bit janky when you do this, but I'm telling you that it's fine. Um, you can see its CPU usage is not that high, actually. Demos. There is a Mandelbrot Demo. Mandelbrot Demo where, well, it's just Mandelbrot set, as you say it in English. Let's try again with web positive. Let's, let's well, actually, let's open Pulse, because I like this. Um, what this allows you to do, this is completely stupid, completely useless. You, are we not completely useless? But it's totally stupid. This allows you to turn off pores or threads of your CPU manually, <laughs> which I think is hilarious because why would you do this? I guess it would make sense maybe on like a laptop, it probably made sense in like the 90s where laptops were like really big and had shitty battery life, so being able to do this like, oh, boop, 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 you only use one core now. And then when you want to do gaming, you just turn the other cores back on again. But actually, let's uh, leave only one core running, and then you'll... I'll leave this in the little corner right there, and then you'll, you can look at it. I think that's a cool thing. We could check that out more in a few minutes when I uh, do a little other test. Web positive. See? Look at this. Now let's see if this works. Test of Bing works, because I don't even know. 
And it's, uh, it doesn't work. It looks kind of weird, actually. Why does it look weird? Uh, it's uh, basically the same. For some reason, I thought there was like a Bing logo here or something. Maybe that used to be a thing. I don't normally use Bing, guys. Don't worry. Don't worry. Oh. Oh, look. Something is still happening. Okay, now it's finished. It wasn't even finished. Okay. That's pretty weird. So you can see that, like, a website like this, it works, but it looks a bit weird and it's a bit, like, glitchy. Let's do the demo of how YouTube.com has broken on this. Let's go to... You'll see that YouTube is finished right now and you can see that it's definitely not. It's absolutely not. Um, what about Twitter? Does Twitter work? Let's see. Let's find out. Maybe Twitter works better than YouTube does. That's my Twitter account. Please go follow it, everybody. I tweet about Linux things and other stuff too. Let's actually open this as a demonstration. Um, Twitter seems to be working mostly. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. What's that mean? I scrolled like minutes ago and now it's like... Subscribe to Uplink Podcasts on Apple Podcasts or whatever you listen to your podcast for some nice, nice uh, Linux news and other tech news and it's funny. Yeah, you can see that this is broken and uh, the reason why I wanted to do this is so I could get this link. For the fact that YouTube doesn't work, we have a solution in Haikuland, which is actually a program, which is called something about Tube in the name. So I'm not gonna find anything. Uber tuber, there it is. You just click, uh, save the URL of the YouTube video, and then you can just download it, or you can click uh, play, and then what happens? I don't even know which video, which video this is anymore. Oh, the screensaver one. This isn't even like a recent video. Why is this pin still? That shows you how bad I am at social media. Let's just minimize this. Downloading. Let's see if it works. Would be really bad if it didn't. Oh my god. Well, let's just put this in that corner. <laughs> there is other things. Of course, there is like games and stuff on here. Because people use this. People make software for it already. Which is wild. I didn't think there would be any software for this, but there clearly is. Um, like, there's a Nintendo 64 emulator on here. Don't know how well it works because I've not tried it a single time. Do we try it now? Let's see if this can even legally acquire Mario 64. <laughs> so we now have legally uh, the, the legally scanned in copy of my own physical Mario 64 cartridge that I actually have. You can see it on my streams when I play Mario 64 and Minecraft and other games that I like on trovo.live slash silas tv because i do ha actually have a n64 let's see my signal for an n64 i don't even know if this is going to work holy shit okay so i guess it's working but there's first of all there's no sound and that's uh <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, this will happen with a lot of software people. A lot of software has errors like this. Like, there's never ball on this because obviously there's never ball for everything. And that's not even a joke. Oh, are you serious right now? Are you actually serious? Is it that broken? This worked yesterday. This worked way better yesterday. Oh no, guys. That's why, again, then, that I think I know it works. But then again, the other ones also worked. Sonic Robo Blast 2. Which is really cool. Don't know how you get out of this, because I'm still not sure why there's no sound. Can I quit again? Want to quit? And then actually, press Y. Y doesn't work, so it's Z, because of American programming. Is it just too silent? Why is there no audio now? Why is there no audio? Doesn't matter. 
Oh, all the rest doesn't have sound right now for some fucking reason. Oh no, I started LMMS. Maybe that's why. Maybe there's some sound server shit. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, so I, I'm sure. I'm now slowly, slowly getting sure that the the audio is actually my main OS issue and not something about <laughs> with Haiku. No, I guess I don't have any sound now. That's fine. Sonic Robo Blast Two, which is a great game, amazing game. Um, works on Linux with a flat pack. Works on Windows. Works on Android. Um, it's pretty cool. Fan made Sonic game, and obviously they made. I love Sonic so much. Look at him. Look at how awesome he looks. Yeah, obviously you can play it here. Already played a little demo bit. Don't know what the rotation there is about, but I guess that once we do start in this location, in that direction, please don't turn around like that anymore. Maybe my rotation is just too bad. So this is running slightly like crap, but it's like fine. You can play this. This is playable. Not running at as high of a frame rate as it should. But for the most part, it's fine. Um, what you notice though that this has oh well, now I'm going to I'm getting screwed. Oh, it does actually work. You can actually oh oh. So this is what happens when you switch to OpenGL. It just goes into a white screen. Or does it? Or does it? Holy shit! <laughs> don't go to OpenGL mode. I expected this because I don't think this has like. 3D acceleration support in like hardware level stuff or whatever, but I thought let's just press that and see what happens. And uh, yeah, that's uh, worked as well as I expected. Actually, it actually worked better than I expected. Work this time. Play your name. Level medium one. Uh, 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 oh, oh, <laughs> um, if you want to, you can save a report, or you can just terminate it, just kill it. Somehow this is worse than usually, because now I also don't even have a mouse anymore, and I think it's... Is it done? No, no, the clock is still running. How do you get your cursor out of this? I have no... Oh, just escape. Good. Good. Because the mouse was hidden. Can I not just find one demo that works the way that I want it to work? I guess we've seen the demo of LibreOffice just working because that was fine. I've used that a few times and I didn't have problems with it. Oh, but as soon as things get more complex, I guess, then stuff is... gets like... Well, yeah gets more complex. Super tax card, maybe. Probably not, but maybe. Let's see. It shows the black screen, but I think it always has that in the beginning. Oh, well, okay. I didn't even do anything yet. This is hilariously bad, but that's what it is right now. It's not done. Clearly not done. Mind test. I have this test world that I made in mind tests, which from what I've seen works mostly fine. I think it's kind of like screwed up with the mouse and when you try to walk kind of. It has kind of shit performance, but a lot of this could be down to so many issues at this point because I don't think this is fully Haiku's fault. Oh right, the demo with the balls. Uh, with not the balls, but demo pulse. So I told you, you can deactivate single single cores in this, and then, well, let's see what happens, right? Let's actually turn all of them on. Let's leave all of them on and open the demo with the teapot. There we go. So you can see it right there. It is a nice load, nice balanced load. It's uh, doing a good job multi-threading this don't know if that's because the teapot program is written well or because the 
I don't know, scheduling system or whatever Haiku uses to spread out the load is good. But it seems to be doing a great job. We launch another one. You can see it getting slower because it's not like frame capped or something. Let's launch Haiku 3D2. So now what you can do or as a demonstration to see that this is like actually doing a good job of scaling the stuff. You can see how interestingly it just got faster with less cores. That's not what I what what? That's not what I expected. What the hell is happening? Okay, guys, IQ people, I'm really confused now. <laughs> Why is it faster with one call compared to like multiple calls? What am I going to do? So I, if I install this on my 12 core, 24 thread Ryzen processor, am I going to have the worst performance ever because I have more, <laughs> because I have more cores? Then one. Holy shit, look at this. That's it. I don't know why this happens. Clearly, I have no clue at this point, but. Let's put. Let's pull up many teapots. Another one. Well. Okay. This is a wild thing. This is a wild operating system. If this works. <laughs> If this works, like, oh, you could just use a, one single core and get more FPS than <laughs> you would ever get with, like, two or six or twelve or whatever. That is amazing. Now, I'm sure there's some weird reason for this, and I'll p put it in a comment and pin it if that's a thing that gets discovered on the Haiku subreddit. I'm going to definitely post this there. <laughs> What the hell? Okay. But you can see that this is actually now kind of starting to make more sense. So as more cores become available, it can schedule, I guess it can plan out more programs to, to more cores, which is interesting why it didn't do this before. Or I guess it did do it, but like not in a good way. So if you turn these off, something that... Some things got faster and others didn't, but yeah, it doesn't matter. It will try its best job at balancing out the uh, the load that it has onto multiple CPUs. And that's very good. That is pretty good. Now, would you have to understand that this is like based on BOS? Or not based on BOS, but it's like the spiritual successor to BOS, which was like the first thing that ever did this. But, yeah, I've probably already explained all of this stuff in some previous part. So with this tree, tree pot, teapot background, we will now leave you. And I don't know. I recommend you download this. I recommend it to you. Download this. Put it in the virtual machine. It will be fun. It will be fun to play around with in virtual box just because it's like a cool idea. As I said, don't put it on real hardware just yet. It's not ready for that, really. You could try that out and submit some bug reports if your hardware doesn't function properly. And now we will end the video. Thank you for watching. Leave a subscribe if you want to see other obscure and weird operating system stuff and program stuff. But yes, yes. Have a good rest of your day. Goodbye. sketch